Today I'm going to talk about the six elements for any smart home system that's going to be comprehensive in nature to kind of cover all the bases. Uh, the first thing that we have to have in any smart home system is comprehensive network coverage. Without network coverage, most of your devices won't work unless they're hardwired and obviously in a smart home you want it to be elegant and clean and so wireless is the way to go. This house is about 3,500 square feet and two floors and our access point to our network provider is actually downstairs. So we had a lot of challenges here initially trying to get good network coverage to all corners of the house, uh, especially for the number of devices that we have on the network here, which is somewhere around 80 <laughs> at this point. So um, what we decided to do was invest in a mesh networking system and what we ended up with was the Eero system. So it's down here in this little rack. The Eero system basically is a series of uh, network boxes that work together as a, as a complete system and provide coverage as a, as a, as a unit. Uh, we actually have four of those Eero boxes in this house. We have one on this floor and three downstairs. Uh, so that network uh, obviously is the kind of cornerstone for any reliable smart home system. And the Eero system that we have we like and it's been working fairly well, fairly reliably for us. The next thing I wanna talk about is lighting. Um, there are a number of smart lighting systems out in the market today. The one that we are using here is the Philips Hue system. So if you look at the ceiling in this room, we have, I think it's 16 or 18 different lights in, this, uh, in the ceiling here. And all of these bulbs are uh, Philips Hue BR30 series bulbs. So they both do white and color. Um, and they, the Philips Hue system uh, also has a little box which looks a lot like the Eero box which is connected to our network access box, uh, access point downstairs. Uh, we also have down here underneath this cabinet one of the Philips Hue light strips uh, and that provides sort of under cabinet lighting there which is important when you're watching TV and we'll go through kind of what that looks like um, in the TV scenarios in a little bit. You can also see that in this room we have a lot of windows and we had a lot of challenges trying to figure out what to do with window coverings in this room initially. Obviously you want to be able to put things along this wall over here uh, and we ended up um, originally putting in just sort of normal blinds but they were very hard to open and close and we didn't end up using these windows as much as you would like. So what we ended up with is a set of blinds from a company called Serena Shades and they are connected to our home network wirelessly using a Cassetta wireless bridge, which is this little box right here. Um, and the Cassetta wireless bridge connects into the network and wirelessly talks to the blinds. And we'll go through a demo of that in a moment. Okay, after the windows, we have climate. Um, this floor is, again, about half of the square footage of our house. It has its own air conditioning unit. There's a stairwell behind, you, behind this wall, and that is where the thermostat is actually located. So when we installed the door there, we ended up cutting off the room from the thermostat, um, which is a problem because there's no air conditioning vent in the stairwell, and so there was no feedback loop between the room being cooled and the temperature sensor on the thermostat being able to detect that. We originally had a Nest thermostat installed uh, in the stairwell when we didn't have a door on this wall. And that works fairly well, but Nest doesn't have support for remote temperature sensors. Uh, and so in order to be able to close that door, have the thermostat in the stairwell, and be able to have good temperature control up here, we needed to uh, install a thermostat that had remote temperature sensor support. We ended up with an Ecobee 3, and so it's installed in the stairwell, but uh, we also needed a remote temperature sensor, and that's right here. This is a little Ecobee remote temperature sensor. And the Ecobee system actually has a support for allowing you to turn off the thermometer in the head unit. So the only temperature sensor that's actually currently enabled on our Ecobee is this one. The one that's in the stairwell on the thermostat itself is uh, not being used to uh, control the system at this point. Okay. So this room has a lot of functions and features. One of them is home theater. And what we wanted to do up here was basically install a um, Dolby Atmos 7.1 home theater system. 
Uh, in order to do that, you need seven speakers and a subwoofer, and you need an amplifier that can control all of that. So what we ended up with here is a, is a Denon unit. Uh, I will post the exact model number in the comments of this video. Uh, and then we have seven, seven speakers which are hardwired into this unit. So there's two here, these are the height speakers. There's a center channel speaker there. The subwoofer is there. We have the two main speakers. And then we have these two surround speakers. The surround speakers are hardwired in and they kind of run, the wire goes through this cabinet and uh, along the floor over there and through a conduit into the back of the Denon unit. Um, for the actual projection, we are using a BenQ W1500 projector. Um, and if you come around here and you look at the screen, you can see that most of these modern uh, home theater systems have software set up that allows you to specify what kind of speakers you have and even a microphone that you can hook to the speaker system that allows you to do room correction so it can automatically tailor both the frequency response and the volume of each speaker based on your listening positions and so I've done that and tuned the system for for this upstairs area. Okay so after the audiovisual uh, one of the things you need to be able to do with all of these systems is to be able to control them somehow. Um, and uh, there are two different ways that you can control the things in this room. One is using your iPhone. So for all of the systems that I just mentioned, the Eero, the Cassetta Wireless, this Denon unit, uh, the Hue lighting system, there is a native iPhone app which allows for system control and you can uh, do things like change the color of the lights, open and, open and close the blinds, uh, turn on and off the stereo system, uh, change the thermostat settings, so on and so forth. Uh, all of them have their own iPhone, uh, iPhone app, and sometimes that's the best way to do it. But additionally, all of those units, with the exception of the Denon unit, uh, have Amazon Alexa support as well. And what Amazon Alexa allows you to do is issue audio commands uh, if you're sitting on the couch, if you're sitting at the desk, you're sitting in bed, you can make all of the same settings that you can with the individual iPhone apps. And additionally, you can actually combine the settings for each of those different subsystems into scenes that you can control. So for instance, I can combine together uh, a setting for the curtains, the lights, uh, and the temperature, for instance, to be able to set a scene. So for instance, if I say, Alexa, Turn on watch TV. Okay. Then what happens is Alexa actually controlled the settings for the blinds, uh, it dimmed the lights, uh, turned off some of the lights in the, in, the, in the room, and this is kind of the optimum setting for watching TV. Alexa, turn on Inferno. You can see that it changed the color of all the lights in the room to red. And if the window had been open, it would have opened the, uh, it would have closed the curtains. Alexa, turn on full light. Okay. So the value of Alexa is that you can actually combine scenes from both the window system, the lighting system, the temperature system into one, uh, one set of commands that you can issue and Alexa can kind of control all of that. So I will put links to all of the pieces of equipment that I mentioned in this video in the comments to this video. Uh, if it will really help if you click on the links to my Amazon affiliate site so that I get credit if you want to buy one of those things and I appreciate your support.